Welcome to Iceland. I'm Chris Burkhardt and today we're here with MPB.com to talk about one of my favorite subjects of all time, aerial photography. It's something that I actually fell in love with here in Iceland, flying around in a small Cessna around these beautiful braided rivers, dramatic landscapes where usually mountains meet the ocean. Now, it's a complicated topic because it's one of the things that feels really daunting for most photographers to get into. So today I wanted to break down some of my most practical steps and practical applications for how to make a successful photo shoot in a plane shooting the landscape below you. Now, let's start with gear, probably the easiest subject to broach. If there's a golden rule when it comes to aerial photography, it's to simplify the process. This is why I suggest to most people, the first time you shoot, take one lens, take one camera. Don't worry or fiddle or be concerned about that other body or that other lens or that other option that maybe is sitting next to you. Try to focus on simplifying the process. Anything you can do within your camera settings, within the features, within your focus, simplify it. For beginners, the first time you're doing this, it's always easier to start with a 70 to 200 or a 24 to 70. Reason being is that this is a lens that you can kind of zoom in on specific subjects. If you're looking for detail, if you're looking for kind of the more minute abstract perspectives looking down, these are great lenses. Now, one of the advantages of these lenses is that the strut of the airplane, right, basically the support that goes to the wing or the blades of the helicopter, you can avoid because you can kind of zoom past them, if that makes sense. They're not my personal favorite lens because I really enjoy shooting a slightly wider angle. So for the more advanced people, the ones who maybe have spent a little bit of time and sort of know how to communicate to the pilot to get what they want, you're going to want to potentially explore shooting with a wider angle, a 16 to 35 and a 24 to 70, shooting it on the wider end. What I love about this is this is where you kind of get the landscapes that are more sweeping. They're more vast. You see a horizon sometimes. You can really see a lot in the photograph. Now, to talk about the camera body. Well, most cameras are going to get you the results that you need, but it really depends on what you're searching for. Do you need an image that is going to be printed huge? Do you want a photograph that you're just gonna be sharing online? Do you want something that you can easily text to a friend? Now, the full frame cameras, for me, are kind of the, uh, the, the, the ultimate tool that you could bring in the air. I tend to lean towards the Sony A1 or the Sony R5. Those are kind of the higher echelon versions of the very best cameras you can get. Reason being is because if I wanna switch between shooting you know, video, high-end video, 4K, 5K, or if I wanna shoot high-end stills, that gives me the option to do that. Now, most people are probably in the range of shooting a more prosumer body, where it's just a normal a7 IV or a normal, you know, maybe an a7S or something like that. All of these cameras can work great. And I don't care what brand you're using, this is just the brand that I am the most comfortable using. So, any camera will work. A polarizing filter is something that will cut reflection and it will also enhance the contrast of the clouds on a bright, sunny day. I use the Polar Pro filters, but really any of them work great. Now I want you guys to think about one very important subject, which is communication with your pilot. Now ideally you have a headset and you can talk to your pilot and kind of tell them what you want, but the preparation that goes into aerial photography is the biggest part of this puzzle. Sitting down and discussing with your pilot what you want to shoot. Maybe you're gonna to go to Hawaii and you're gonna photograph the Nepali coast. Giving that person a moment to kind of explain what you're looking for. Hey, this is the shot that I want. I really want to shoot a wide angle perspective shot from kind of, you know, this reference image, you know, what, what, what altitude do you think that was shot at? Maybe showing them because they could tell you and you guys could collaborate. It has to be collaboration. For me, I never get in the air without a couple items. First of all, I always bring a jacket because normally in a helicopter or in a plane, you can strip that jacket off. Okay. No big deal. Usually I'll bring a puffy of some kind, an insulated layer. Um, if it's warm out, just a light one is fine. 
a pair of gloves always. Now, if you bring a pair of gloves, make sure that they're gloves that actually allow you to have finger sensitivity for your phone, because you'll probably want to shoot a video, and you have good access to your fingers for the camera buttons. That's important. Also, a buff, something that goes up and around your neck, because sometimes when you're opening that window, you're opening that door, it can be biting cold, and oftentimes that air is just escaping into your jacket, right? So a buff is something you can pull up over your ears and over your mouth. Another thing that's really important is a pair of glasses. I can't tell you how many times that I have flown somewhere and I've forgotten my glasses and we are just staring into the sun and it is a brutal thing, especially if there's snow or if you're flying over water of any kind. Now you'll probably want to take those off when you're shooting, but having something that maybe you can take off and let hang around your neck is really helpful. Beyond those items, there are a couple easy and quick things that are important, but it's a little more specific towards the type of craft that you're shooting. For me, I like to pack my cameras in a tiny kit cube, which is basically like an insertable cube that can go in a backpack, and it really holds one camera and two to three lenses. Extra memory cards, extra battery, and a couple lens cloths shoved in there. I like that because it's small, I can kind of put it around my waist, I can put it at my feet. It's not gonna obstruct and take up a lot of space because space is limited inside these crafts. Now usually, that's kind of what I'll have right in front of me here. And I'll just put all the things in there, my phone, my glasses, whatnot, I'll kind of keep it right here at my waist and I've got access to it at all times. Beyond that, there isn't really any key piece of equipment that's going to make this experience successful. The biggest thing is just going out and trying it. And I know full well that spending time in the air is spendy. It's expensive and it's tough and you're gonna have to really think through the shots that you wanna get in order to make it the most successful. Now, I guess in some ways for me, aerial photography has been uh, a passion that I've really explored over the last decade and something that I've tried to perfect and understand and it's always been that my best images, my best work, have been the byproduct of planning and kind of obsessing over a certain place in a certain time. For example, the Blue Pools, this image right behind me, shot in Wrangell St. Elias National Park in Alaska, one of the biggest national parks, actually the biggest national park in America. It's the size of Yellowstone and Switzerland combined. It has the Bagley Ice Field, this huge ice field, one of the largest in the world, that forms these beautiful Blue Pools. There's a specific time of year when these blue pools form, when the glacier and the snow starts to melt and kind of fills into these depressions, chunks of ice rise up. And I just kind of fell in love with the idea that this is something that I really, really want to shoot. And ultimately, I got the opportunity. About four or five years ago, I went there with the intention of just getting this specific shot. It was one of the best trips of my entire life. And to really see that in person was a joy. I felt like I had the right camera. I felt like I knew the right altitude. I obviously really leaned into the pilot's experience. And it's always been these situations where you think, you dream, you plan, you execute, and it feels incredibly fulfilling. And those are some of my favorite images and actually the ones that are usually the most meaningful when I've been able to pour some of myself into the process of making it happen and not just showing up and spraying and praying, hoping that I'm getting something good. My hope and my dream is that aerial photography can become something that you fall in love with too. I know it can be pricey. I know it can be challenging. I know that it comes with hours and hours of, you know, of kind of disappointment at times, not getting what you want, and then finally seeing that thing that you're hoping for. My hope is that this can kind of weed through some of the complications and make it really joyous. Because to me, the gift of flight is one of the greatest opportunities that we have to experience in this lifetime. Our ability to see the landscape from a bird's eye view is something that I will just never take for granted and I hope that you can fall in love with it just as much as I have. Happy flying.